Hey, how's it going, everyone? This is Mike. Welcome back to my channel and to another episode of Movies from A to Z. And I wanted to do something a little bit different for the letter T. So I've decided to talk about this 1935 German Nazi propaganda film called Triumph of the Will, directed by a woman named, um, what is her name? Lenny Riefenstahl. Lenny Riefenstahl. Okay. Now, uh, Adolf Hitler himself, the Chancellor of Germany, was sort of the uncredited executive producer, producer of this movie. He and his fellow Nazis, they had a notion that, that film could be very helpful in getting um, support for their cause to inspire the German people and, and get them to um, be enthusiastic about Nazism. So, in 1934, there was a, a Nazi party rally in the city of Nuremberg, and he hired Lenny Riefenstahl to, to not just make a documentary and just turn the camera on and show all these processions and all the speeches and all the celebrations. He wanted her to create a grand drama, uh, propaganda, something that would inspire people and create an idea, not just to show truth, but in a way to create truth. So that's what she did. Now, Lenny Riefenstahl, had been a dancer and an actress, uh, made several films in the 1920s and the early 1930s, and then she became a director, directed a handful of films, and she had actually directed a film for the Nazis the previous year. In 1933, there was another rally in uh, Nuremberg, a Nazi party rally, and she made sort of a documentary film of that experience, and it was called The Victory of Faith, and it... <sighs> It was um, pulled from dis distribution by Hitler and the Nazis because there was a man in that film who was very prominent. He was one of Hitler's um, fellow Nazis. He was a man named Ernst Röhm. He was the head of the par paramilitary group, the SA. I can't pronounce the German word, just call it the SA. And Unfortunately, he had a falling out with Mr. Hitler, so Mr. Hitler had him assassinated, along with a lot of other uh, people in the SA group that did not agree with Hitler's particular vision of life in Germany. So it, the event was called the Night of the Long Knives. So they decided that they had to erase Ernst Rome from German history and from the minds of the German people. So they pulled the film, The Victory of Faith, from distribution and it was, it was considered to be lost for a long time. They tried to destroy every copy. I guess uh, a couple of copies were actually found in Britain in the 1990s. So anyway, the next year, in 1934, when they had another Nazi party rally in Nuremberg, they hired Riefenstahl to make another film, but this time not just a documentary, but to create something something that would be uh, much more than a documentary. So that's what she did. It took her almost a year to edit the film because she had thousands of feet of film. Supposedly she she ate and slept in the editing room for almost a year and uh, it, was, it was quite an achievement. It's very impressive. Um, the way the way they, they make Hitler look like a, a, a great hero, a messianic figure. It's funny because when he first appears in the film, when I first see a sort of a long shot of this this very unassuming short guy with this decidedly weird mustache. I don't know why he ever grew a mustache like that. I couldn't help but think of Charlie Chaplin in The Great Dictator, who was doing this spot-on, uh, wicked imitation of Adolf Hitler. The character was called Adenoid Hinkle. And uh, that, that came to my mind immediately. I've seen pictures and film clips of Adolf Hitler my entire life, but I've never seen nearly as much of him or heard as much of his voice as I did in this movie. And it was... It took a while. Just looking at him, I thought, why was anyone ever so impressed by this man? But when he started to eventually give speeches about in the middle of the film, the speeches all started. Um, he was he was quite compelling. I didn't like what he was saying, but just the way he delivered it, the way his voice kept rising and the way he was uh, almost shouting his speeches. Uh, he, yeah, he, he had a very compelling uh mystique about him. It's kind of hard to explain. It's unfortunate also. But So the film shows a lot of processions, uh, not just military processions, but workers and the Hitler youth. Uh, a lot of people who were just sort of um, 
showing their devotion to the the rebirth of Germany, the rebirth of the German people after all of their years of suffering after World War One. Uh, Germany went through a lot of a lot of very very bad years, and the Nazi Party was determined to help. Germany and and the people rise again and just basically go on for uh, he thought it was going to go on for a thousand years he thought that it would the, the, the Third Reich was going to go on for a, a, a millennium you know just didn't quite work out that way but it was interesting that a lot of his speeches he was talking about um, how the German people needed to learn sacrifice they needed to be strong but they had to believe in peace that that was I was a little surprised to hear him say that. And there, there was, no, there were not just speeches by Hitler, but by a lot of the other Nazis as well. The most chilling quote to me was by um, Rudolf Hess, who said, "The party is Hitler, and Hitler is Germany, just as Germany is Hitler." Which I, in a way, sounds a little bit silly, but it just that's about as clear-cut fascist as you could possibly get. Um, it's a fascinating film. I found myself also thinking about um, my own feelings about nationalism and patriotism because I love my country. I love the the, the his well. We we have a very complicated history in this country, and certainly not all of us not all of it is positive. But I do love my country, and I love the flag. I, I show reverence to the flag and all that sort of thing. But um, I can only take so much until I have to just say, well, okay, that's, I need to get away from this. And just, you know, all the shouting and the political speeches, which to me is nothing but uh, a series of slogans. That's what I felt that his, Hitler and all these other guys were doing, just repeating a bunch of slogans. And that's, that's what most political speeches turn out to be. And after a while, after watching this, it goes on for 120 minutes. And after a while, it just got to be way too much. I mean, it was uh, just overload, just patriotic overload. I don't even even if this had been about uh, an American rally that went on for 120 minutes with endless speeches and cheering and crowds shouting "Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil," and with the salute and all this stuff, it would have been it would have been way too much, even if it had been dedicated to my own country. So. I admit that in the last maybe um, 10 minutes or so, I started fast forwarding because it was just repetition of the same thing over and over again. But uh, I never knew that there could be so many swastikas anywhere. There were swastikas uh, embedded in the size of buildings, you know, flag after flag after flag, uniforms. Um, they, Hitler was taken to a hotel in the center of Nuremberg. There were, there were, uh, swastikas all over the hotel just on in every window it was just insane just just insane i uh and i guess they even constructed an entire arena just for this rally and and specifically to show in this film they had these um there was this big area where they had um three very high columns uh concrete columns i guess each one of them embedded with a gigantic swastika it was just just really amazing. Uh, so I'm probably not making a lot of sense here. This is absolutely worth seeing, but don't 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 be fooled into thinking that you're watching a documentary because it was uh, manipulation at its very best. But it showed the talent of um, Lenny Riefenstahl as a filmmaker. It's too bad that she she's famous for this. Now she actually lived till the age of 101. She died in 2003 in Germany. She um, Went on to make other films. I think she spent, yeah, I think it said that she spent a little time in jail after um, the, the the Nazis fell from power and they started having all the trials and all that. She spent some time in prison, but then after that, she went back to making a few other films. She eventually became a photographer and an author, and to the end of her life, she swore that she did not know all the atrocities that the that the Nazis were doing. She she held on to that for a long time. But she had she was very close to Adolf Hitler, and a lot of people think that she had an intimate relationship with him. But that's uh, that's kind of conjecture. Anyway, Triumph of the Will. I would I would actually recommend this because it's just so unique and it's important to see. I think to show our history. I look upon this 
not as a film that I enjoy, but that I appreciate for what it is, in the same way that I look upon The Birth of a Nation, which is also mentioned in uh, some of the essays about this. They also talk about The Birth of a Nation, which is a brilliantly made film that, that advanced the art of film so much, but it had an ugly story, and it's unfortunate that it had the negative influence that it had in American culture and Triumph of the Will had the same effect in German culture. I guess during World War II almost every theater in Germany was was constantly showing either all or some parts of Triumph of the Will just to keep that enthusiasm and that that sort of propaganda thing going for the German people. Uh, really something amazing to see. Um, okay so that's my letter T film. Uh, let me know if you've seen this, what you think about it, and thanks for watching. Comments are always welcome.